Welcome to another episode of Until It's Done, a devoted podcast. I'm your host, Dana Lynn Kay, and I am once again here in the studio with my good friend, Serena Taylor. Welcome back, Serena. Thank you. I'm so glad you had me back. Yeah. Well, we had a lot of amazing feedback from the last podcast that we did. People, I think because I'm having people on who are like good friends of mine, not like people who I just like kind of like just met and I wanted to have on. They're actually people who I'm comfortable chatting with these topics, but you know what I mean? How it's, it would just float. It was like real girl talk and it was real, uh, just natural, just rolled and people liked it. And so I got a lot of positive uh, feedback from the last podcast that we did. So I just wanted to do like a to be continued and also, talk about some hot topics. And the hot topics we're talking about today, cardio, cardio is a hot topic, metabolic adaptation, because that is like a buzzword. That is like majorly people are talking about that and reverse dieting because I went through a reverse diet last year. I never had in my life. And you and I were in touch basically through the whole time that I was doing it through our Marco Polo app that we, that we talk about. So I want to like dive into those topics. So I'm just giving you guys an overview of what you're going to hear us discussing today. Now, first and foremost, um, what you just started, you just started kind of like dialing things in for yourself. Mm -hmm. What are you doing right now? So I've never really done a hard diet and I've always had a really good metabolism, thankfully, but I was eight a lot. So when I started working with my coach, I was like, here are my goals. I've been eating 2,500 calories a day, all that kind of stuff. He's like, great. I can start you right. And what are your diet. goals? Were your goals to do like finally like a cut or like, is this aesthetic goals? Like what are, what are your goals right now? Great question. So I'm working with him for 12 months. My initial goal was to lean out and then try to start bulking a little bit more. So he's like, okay, I'm going to put you right into a diet because you've been working so hard before. I know your body will respond right away. And then we're going to kind of reassess. It's been just over eight weeks now, going to get some lab work done here soon. And then we're going to try to reassess maybe after 10 to 12 weeks okay. about where I'm at, but it's been Amazing. Okay. So for when, okay. So when we say oh, it's like ugh, the word bulk is like so scary. Like I just hate the word bulk. You're, you're putting on, because a lot of women don't want to hear that because no mm -hmm. woman wants to be described as like bulky bulk, right. but you know, but what that really means is, okay. So you already have a background where you, you have muscle on your body. You've been weight training for years and doing cardiovascular. So the first thing that you wanted to do was probably really just see how much muscle you're really working with, which the only way to really like aesthetically see is, mm. is to lean out a little bit. So you kind of wanted to see, you know, if you lean out your arms, you can really see what the size delts you're working with. Cause a lot of people don't even realize how much they have under there. I remember the first time I leaned out, I thought I was going to have a way more muscle than I did. <laughs> and I leaned out and I was like, oh my God, like I thought I'd be so much bigger than this. <laughs> like I thought I have so much muscle. So then I realized like, wow, I really, I took off two years from my next, the, the next time that I did a cut and I, I didn't call it a bulk, but I was putting on lean tip muscle mass. Mm. I was like, I want some bigger shoulders and not bigger, but like just fuller, rounder shoulders. I think delts give a beautiful aesthetic yeah, look. Agreed. And I was like, I want my legs to be filled out. I need a butt. Like my butt's like a pancake. So I got to put some glutes on. So it wasn't really, yeah, it's a bulk, but meaning like it's putting on some more lean tissue so that when you do lean out and you do belt off that body fat, what are you left with? Some beautiful curvy, aesthetically pleasing, athletic, muscular, physique, right? Yeah. And I also felt too, when I started working with my coach and he agrees with me that I want to actually sit 10 to 15 pounds lighter. Okay. So yeah. He feels very confident that I could sit 10 to 10 pounds lighter sure. on my frame. We're going to try for 15, but you know how it goes. Sometimes your body does not want that. Yeah. It sits at, at its state. Yeah. So that's what we're going to try to figure out. Well, that's what, yeah, exactly. And the only way that you can really know, like, and you know what, sometimes you have numbers in your head that you think that you want to be at. I used to think I wanted to be at certain numbers and then I get there and I'm like, okay, cause it sounded great. I'd be like, I want to be like 125. And then <laughs> I would get down to 125 cause I, you know, and I get there and I'm like, I have no hips. I look like a little, like a 14 year old boy. I have no curves. My butt is flat. Like I'd put on a dress and I'm like, I don't even feel sexy anymore. I put on jeans and I'm like, 
ew. Like I didn't have that like want, want, like that like, like that like sexy swagger anymore. And I'm like, okay, why do I think that skinny or less weight would look better on me? It doesn't. It actually doesn't look better. And my face would get too lean. And I'm like, okay, I ugh, I don't like that look. So then all of a sudden, this number I had in my head, I was like, where did I come up with that? Like, why did I think I needed to sit there? So it's interesting because it's like once you start playing around. And then you see like, actually my body looked a lot better kind of in between where I thought, like maybe I don't want to be exactly up where I am, but maybe that number's too lean, but you don't know until you try. Absolutely. And you're right about the way you feel. All of a sudden you can get that diet face and you don't know. But like for me, as you know, the scale is just a measurable tool. Yeah. So I'm not like, oh, I need to be at 155 pounds. It's like, that's the goal to see if my body wants to sit there. Yeah. Just so it's a measurable tool. Right. Cause yeah. you, you know what it's like. Oh my God. I, it's so funny because you, we throw out these numbers and we're like, okay, that's, you know, and somebody, a lot of people on Instagram will ask me, they'll see my pictures and be like, how tall are you? How much do you weigh? And I'm like, you know, if I say I'm 135, 5'4", 135, which is like my average right now, like I was 134 this morning, but like I fluctuate, like a week ago I was 142, like I am a mm -hmm. big fluctuator, but I'm like, okay, well, what does that even mean? Because if you don't have my physique or you don't have my muscle or you're not conditioned how I am and you don't have my build, you can also be 134 and look nothing like what I look like and vice versa, you know, vice versa, like right? So absolutely. You telling me that you're that weight and me telling you that I'm 165 pounds. It's like, you're probably like, yeah, that's about right. Yeah. And we don't, I don't even think about whether or not that's a heavy weight for you because like you said, or what is different. And what does that composition look like? Like how yeah. much, how much of it is muscle? How much of it, there's somebody that could be my same weight, but they are 35% body fat where mm -hmm. I'm sitting at 17% or 16%. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, okay, well that certainly doesn't a pound of feathers versus a pound of bricks. Yeah. They certainly look different. They're both yeah. a pound. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, no, that's so true. And, and as women, we carry more internal body fat. Mm -hmm. So it's like women get so stressed out about their body fat percentage. I'm like, don't, don't, right. you know, unless yeah. it's causing you health concerns. So in this cut that you're doing now, or this, your first, you're leaning out. So you were sitting at like your, your daily intake was like 2,500 cows. Mm -hmm. So now obviously he's cutting back your, your calories. Yep. Okay. And then cardio, we wanted to talk about cardiovascular because now everyone assumes that obviously in a cut, you're going to be like, okay, do as much cardio as you can do. Like we want to get the weight off and we, and, and cardio has to be a big part of it. And obviously what is your, what's your approach right now with cardio and what are your thoughts behind cardio in a, in a cut or even in a lifestyle. Let's just talk about cardio. So cardio for me right now, because I'm eating lower calories, my coach is of the belief that obviously the more cardio you do, the more you have to eat. So he kind of balances it out for me. So I only do 15 minutes of cardio three times a week. I'll do like a group fitness class and then I'll do one true like hit training session of like five to six minutes. Wow. Yeah. That's all I do for cardio. Yeah. Having said that, it just depends on your goals, right? And it's kind of more, my 15 minutes is a steady state. Whereas the group fitness is a little bit more interval training. And then my hit training, like a true hit training is you should be working so hard that you're smoked. Like I do, if I do battle ropes, I do 30 seconds on 30 seconds off yep. after six rounds. Oh yeah. I want to expire. Yeah. I mean, it's over. Yeah. And you're putting everything wants. into it. Exactly. Yeah. Those, those. All right. So now, anybody who follows me on social media has seen, I mean, I turned an entire front of my house, the living room into a cardio room. I, you know, I don't want to say like, I'm a, I don't want to call myself cardio queen because cardio queen obviously means like you don't, you just like, or cardio bunny. Like these are just the people who just do cardio. Now that's not me. I do a lot of weight training, a lot of weight training, a lot of eating. And, but cardio has been something that like I started fitness and bodybuilding and all that back way back when it was like, we, we, they weren't saying like, Oh, don't do a lot of cardio. Like it was like, cardio was like part of it. And like, everybody thought cardio is what you need to get shredded. Like mm -hmm. cardio is what you need to lose all this body fat. So I got very into cardio when I was 17, where we, I always had a cardio machine in my house. Now I have a collection of them. I've got like 
seven, you know, commercial <laughs> equipment. I've got a Peloton, like everything, a Stairmaster, everything. And I was, I've used cardio as like one of my tools and, but probably overused cardio, admittingly overused cardio through the years where I probably would have been carrying a hell of a lot more muscle especially through all the years of my dieting and, and all of my years of like eating so like clean and strict and whatever, even though I eat a lot, mm -hmm. it's still I've done, cause my cardio can be anywhere from like 30 to 60 minutes and it's intense. It was never low intensity. Yeah. And so, um, I always wondered like, geez, what would I really look like if I wasn't always told <laughs> to be doing such a crazy amount of cardio and then also cardio, um, you know, I've suffered from depression and I used cardio to get off of depression medication. So I didn't want to be on any medication anymore. I don't know what age it was, but I went off all depression medication. I'm talking maybe 15 years ago and I was using cardio as my morning, like mm -hmm. brain boost, where if I felt depressed, I would do cardio and that was in place. It was like self-medication. I was using my cardio. I'm not like an addicted cardio person where I'm like, I have to do it. I'm like over exerciser, but it's like, it was like part of my lifestyle where it was like, wake up, coffee, cardio, kids. Like it was part of my routine. So I felt, I feel weird without it. Like I didn't do cardio this morning and I'm like, I feel weird. Right. But I also think with you, you have a very healthy relationship because you separate your cardio from your strength training. Yes. You can differentiate between the point of your goals. Yes. So you know that your cardio is what gets you up in the morning and whatever else. And then if you want to do some strength training, you usually do it separately Yes, because you realize Always. there's two different things. People associate working out with burning fat. Yeah. It, you know the difference. You don't just work out, you train. Mm -hmm. And that's what I always try to explain to people. You, if you really want to see goals, you have to have a training program. You can't just work out and expect to hit your goals. Right. It's good to work out. It's good to move. There's nothing wrong with cardio. Absolutely not. I see, love it. My, my theory behind cardio these days, the reason why I started to not like it that coaches and people on social media were telling people, you don't have to do cardio. I do no cardio. You don't have to do cardio. Okay. For a couple of reasons. Number one, like we are a sedentary world right now, or at least Americans or whatever, like certain, certain, you know, demographic. I, I'm not pushing a lawnmower. I'm not doing all of my yard work. I'm not doing the stuff that years ago people were doing. I'm not farming. I'm not out there picking all of my own food and planting and hoeing. I'm not shoveling snow. I'm not like, you know what I mean? Like I'm not doing all that stuff that like, <laughs> that like a lot of people yeah. in different cultures have to do. So it's like, they're doing this physical labor work and they're picking their fruit and they're doing, and they're climbing hills and they're doing like they're herding sheep, like they're, you know, whatever you're like all these, you know what I'm saying? Like years ago when like people were so active with their, with their jobs and with their, like we're in front of computers, people, whether you're doing accounting, customer service, mm -hmm. you're a coach, you're whatever, you're like staring at a computer on your butt all day long. So when now people were saying, oh, and you don't even need cardio. I'm like, yo, maybe if you like on, t you know, it's like already, it's like, stop telling people to have sedentary lives. Like there's nothing wrong for me. When I stop doing cardio, that means if I'm not actively putting cardio as part of my life, as part of my day where I'm doing the stair master and I'm walking up the stairs for 30 minutes, it's like, I probably won't walk any other stairs or mm -hmm. I, you know what I mean? Like, or I have a staircase in my house. Okay. So I go up and down it a few times a day, but like, that's not getting my heart rated up enough. Uh, where am I really working my heart, my lungs, my cardiovascular, where am I really like, right? Mm -hmm. Agreed. I, I have a client, this is an interesting concept. So one of my clients is a triathlete and she's a cancer doctor. So she works like 12, 13 hours a day at a desk. She'll get two, maybe 3000 steps in a day, but her triathlete training. So when she's on a bike for five hours on a Sunday, it doesn't record steps. Yeah. So it's one of those things you kind of have to dig in. And that's what I like about when my clients are open and honest with me about their cardio. If a client is sedentary and they have low steps, it's an encouragement process. If they're a nurse and they get 12 to 15,000, that's not a weight loss tool for them. Right. They're moving, but somebody who's sedentary, it might be. 
So every single person is different, just kind of goes full circle. Exactly. And that's why it's like, it depends on what your lifestyle is to say whether or not you need cardio or not. Because if you're somebody like right now, I just did a, an Instagram post with doing the Peloton with Bijou last night. I've been trying to get her to do a 30 minute Peloton with good music. And because I'll say to her, the thing is, it's like, it's not that I'm trying to get, but she's not like my 11 year old to start doing all this exercise. But the thing is, is like all, she, I got her an Apple watch for fitness tracking or for step tracking. And I'm like, Beesh, how many steps do you have? And she'll be like, oh, I have 3000. And I'm like, Beesh, like, that's not okay. Like, wh-? and then she's not in organized sports or just isn't, you know, she plays tennis at school every, ever on the weekdays. But even that, you know, she's, whatever, playing for whatever the period is, 40 minute period or whatever. But then I'm like, okay, well, you need, to, you're not moving your body enough. You're not breaking a sweat. You're not working your lungs. And Bijou, like her, her blood work came back that she's like borderline uh, pre-diabetic. And I'm mm-hmm. like, Be, this it's not okay. So I'm like, we need to make activity fun. And like, even though people will be like, that's so weird to give an 11 year old cardio. No, it's, it's, it's exercise. It's physical activity for a kid who is doing sedentary things. Her after school activity is sewing. Like she sits at a sewing mm. machine. So it's like, yeah, in those certain cases, like I'm sorry, but like it, it, it's something where cardio should be implemented in her life. Now there are some days when I walk the dog and yesterday I walked the dog four miles. So did I need extra cardio on top of that? No. But then other days when it's pouring rain and I'm home in front of my computer all day and I look down and I'm like, oh, wow, I have uh, 2,200 steps because I've just gotten up to like go to the bathroom mm-hmm. and maybe get fill up my water jug. Yeah, I'm going to go get my butt on cardio because that means my body has just sat there like – doing nothing. Like I haven't used any energy. So I, like with cardio, I hate it that it gets demonized, but if it's used correctly for health and for physical activity and for burning energy correctly and not to like, Oh, I'm just doing cardio just to, you know, what just burn fat or like, I you know, whatever that's the, somebody who's abusing it or doing it incorrectly. Right. And Exactly. Like I said, you have a healthy relationship with it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with encouraging your kids to do that. When I was a kid, I grew up in a really, really small town. It was safe. We could go ride our bikes around, but there wasn't anything to do. And my mom would be like, okay, let's go for a walk. Let's go down to the park. And we would walk and we would play and we would do those things. And we were always active. We were allowed, we got a Nintendo when they first came out. We were allowed to play for like an hour a day and that was it. Mm -hmm. You know, we had to get out and go do stuff, but we wanted to. Right. And that's what, that's the thing. Like even with Bijou, I'll be like, Hey, let's walk the dog. Like let's do two laps around the block. Or I said to her yesterday, she wanted, you know, to do something. And I was like, okay, you can have, you can do that, but I need you. What are your steps? And she looked down and it was like, again, it was like 3,200. And I'm like, I'd like to see 7,000 before we do the next sedentary activity. Like let's keep moving our body and do it in a fun way. I'm like, go put on your roller skates, Mm -hmm. walk the dog, Mm -hmm. like go outside with your sister and, you know, just, I want you to go move your body, just get exercise. Like let's not, uh, just do all sedentary activities. And so, you know, I feel like cardio now cardio for me, like, because I'm already so active every day, it is like a tool I use to kind of like, when I need to give my, like kind of stroke my metabolism and give myself a boost, that's when I'll do more than just like, low steady state cardio. Like that's like when I do like my intervals on my stair mm-hmm. master and I feel my, my whole metabolism just start to like, whew, like rev up. It's like throwing some coal into the fire or some uh, wood into the fire. Right. And like, <laughs> that's what I need to kind of like, because I have been, I do kind of eat so healthy and so, and kind of like the same all the time, like eat, that. And I don't want to drop my calories so low so if I still, if I want to keep eating how I'm eating, but I need to kind of tighten up my body a little bit, I throw in like a, like a really like hard 30 minute session and I'm like, boom, like, there we go. We just like really just fired things up. You have to, because you get that endorphin rush and you need all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. And think about the health benefits for your heart for yep. doing cardio. Even if you stay in a steady state where your heart rate maybe is around like, let's say 65 to 75%, maybe it's not that high. You're still in a fat burning zone there and you're burning the stored fat in your body, yeah. but it's also moving things around. Yeah. And once you get 
not addicted to that feeling, but you need it just like eating clean. Right. Once you start eating clean, if you eat something bad, you don't want it. Right. Exactly. How did I ever, I think that I think the perfect storm and this is just me. Like I am sure like all these freaking life, these coaches will come, no, but for me, I think I have to have a very, active lifestyle. Like I, I have to hit a certain number of steps. I aim for the 10,000, whether just from walking Jagger, moving around my house, parking far places, the neat is amazing. Mm -hmm. But like, I also realize that neat isn't enough because I've also seen like people in my life where their jobs are on their feet. They're moving around, they're doing, but that just isn't enough. Like I'm like thinking like, okay, you already have an active job. So you're getting all of these steps and that's great. But like, I need that extra, like the cardio, whether it's a couple times a week to like, and when I say, you know, two, three times a week for somebody who's like, maybe not as into it as I am, but like do it where like now this is intentional. This is intentional exercise where we are getting our heart rate up, breaking a sweat, put on some music and like get in a workout. And it's just different. Like it hits the body different. Neat and moving is like fine, but I feel like there's no like, there's no like resistance to it. Mm -hmm. There's no, like, you're not really like, I guess it is good for your heart and your lungs, but it's not like when you're like doing the Stairmaster or you're doing, like you said, the battle ropes, or you're doing something where you're really taxing your body, forcing your body to like level up a little bit. Right. Yeah. It's so good to change it up. I think what kind of going back to like the metabolic adaptation mm -hmm. concept, what a lot of people don't realize is that the major burning of your body on a daily basis is your basal metabolic rate. Right. So an actual workout only burns excluding neat, right? But an actual workout only burns about 10% yeah. of your, of your burn each day. So people put so much focus into their workout. And I'm like, you realize that you need to be taking care of the other 90% yes. because if your basal metabolic rate starts to drop, it's going to burn slower and slower and slower. Exactly. And that's what's so, that's what I find interesting. Cause I've mm -hmm. even read things where it's like everything. So when you are under eating calories and now you're, you're everything, everything slows down. Like, and when people say like, I'm eating 1200 calories and I still can't lose any weight. It's like, yeah, cause you have now lowered what your set point is mm -hmm. and like what your body needs to survive and your body, like there will be a mechanism where like your body will slow everything down. Like even your blinking slows down, everything slows down to conserve the energy, Yeah, which is really interesting. And so I realized that cause I was like, wow, like these people who've been under eating and under eating and under eating. And then they're like, but I barely eat anything. It's like, yeah, you barely eat anything. And your body has learned to survive on barely eating anything. And it's not going to let any weight go mm -hmm. because it doesn't need to. My basal metabolic rate based on my age, weight, height, gender is 1500 calories a day. So that's only about 60. It's only about 60 to 70% of what you burn in a day. So that's why I know my maintenance is somewhere between 25 and 2,700 calories. So, but, so when people come to me, if I was only eating 14 or 1500 calories a day, my BMR is going to drop. It will not be 1500. Yeah. It might drop to a thousand or 800 or whatever. So I, there's a lot of people that reach out to me and they're like, I, I've been, I've tried everything. I'm eating 1200 calories a day. I'm like, your metabolism is shot. Yep. You need to reestablish your metabolism. And if it took you, if you've been, you know, chronically dieting or doing that kind of stuff for 20 years, it's not going to get fixed in a few months. No. And I, so that happened to me last year. Um, I finally decided I couldn't budge. I couldn't move the scale anymore. In fact, I was gaining very easily. And I, rem and I, I'm like, wow, I think after all these years, it finally caught up to me because for whatever reason it hadn't caught up to me, but I think also, cause like my, my hormones went mm -hmm. haywire with the IUD, all this stuff. So anyway, it all caught up to me and I was eating. I mean, I was dropping my cows. I was all the way down to like 1200, 1300 calories. And I couldn't budge the scale anymore. And in the first time in my life, I was like, Dana, this is going to, it sucks, but you're going to have to do it. We're going to have to start slowly adding in. 
I, I, first of all, I dropped doing cardio for quite a long time. I remember you did. It was painful as hell. <laughs> and I looked at my cardio room and I'm like, oh my God, it's just sitting there it's lonely. Like dust on the I'm stick. like, am I one of those people who like buys a cardio machine and then I'm going to use it? Like I feel like it's a sellout. And then I was like, but I was like, fine. Okay. So I had to do everything because also my cortisol levels were high. My stress levels were high. My body was just retaining water. My legs were full. I was like, okay, this is, I'm, this is, I'm shot. So then- I had to slowly week after week. And this took me, I think, I think I was doing a reverse. I don't know. Maybe I was in a reverse for like five months. I don't, it was a while, but every week mm-hmm. I was adding in a hundred calories, a hundred calories, a hundred calories. And some weeks my, my weight didn't budge. And then other weeks it went up and then it would steady and then it would go up and then it would steady and then it would go up. So finally I got up to like, I had some weeks where I was eating like, 22, 2300 calories. And that's a lot for me. Yeah, that was that's like, good. That was a lot for me. And I was like, oh my God. And it was like scary. But then again, I'm like, I love food. So this isn't really scary as long as the scale like doesn't move. Because when you, when you start seeing it go up, somebody like me wants to start dieting and pull it back again. So eat, so it was go, so the calories are going up. And then if the scale was going up a little bit, I was like, eh, you know, and I was like a little thicker and I was just, but what I did was I knew that I had to trust the process and I knew that this was part of the process. I'm like, Dana, this is to get your metabolism so that you can stay lean and still eat a lot. And so like, have your, have your cake and eat it too type of thing. So I was like, Dana, trust the process add in the calories, stop abusing cardio, like stop doing the cardio to try to get lose because it's not working anymore. So what I did was cut back the cardio. I started just walking every day for my physical activity. I just uh, just focused on the neat mm-hmm. and um, I got the calories up. And then finally, when my weight held, you know, I don't know if I was like 137, 138 and I was holding eating that many calories. I was like, all right, I really, um, it's time to cut. I was whatever. I pulled back down to like 1600 cows, 1700 cows. That became a cut for me. Correct. And I got way. to 125. Mm-hmm. I was like lean as hell. I was like, oh my God. And what, 125 is like what I was on at showtime, like when I used to compete and I'm eating that many calories and I'm not even doing cardio yet. And you were probably <laughs> carrying more muscle because you were eating more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and I was eating and lifting and I was lifting like four times a week. And I would, my, my lifting split was actually where I was training three, four days in a row and I was resting three days in a row. That's a great split. I was tearing it up for four days in a row and then three complete off days. It was a really cool split. Yeah. Let your body reset and relax. Relax, reset, flush. Mm -hmm. And then I would be all like inflamed and I would flush and I would just like chill and my body would look better and better. And then I got all these comments on Instagram being like, oh my God, what are you doing? Oh my God, you look great. Oh, you look great. You look great. And I'm like, yeah. And then I tell people, actually I'm doing this and I'm eating like 16 to 1800 calories and I'm lean as hell. And people are like, oh, I can never, I can never do that. Oh my God, my body would blow up. My body would blow up. And I'm like, that's because you don't, you didn't, you haven't gone through this process. You haven't trusted the process. You, you really, and you know what? Yeah, it it was uncomfortable, but like there were a lot of days that I would just like throw on my workout clothes, throw you a lot of times on Instagram, you see me just wearing a hoodie and it'd be like in the middle of the summer. And I'm like, where Cause I'm like, you know what? I don't need to focus on what the body looks like right now. Cause right now I'm doing a little, I'm doing a little revamp. I'm doing a little maintenance on the metabolism here. Absolutely. Right. But you get it. Yes, I get it. When I have clients come to me and they're like, all right, you're the boss. I don't expect everybody to know this stuff. This is education. Yes. Yeah. I don't expect people to know this. The average person does not know this information, but if they come to me and they're like, all right, you said, so you're the boss. I'm going to trust you. Yeah. It's like, okay, then you have to, cause six weeks from now, you're going to start getting frustrated that yeah. you're not losing weight. And you have to be, like you said, you did probably five, six months of a reverse. Oh, maintenance. I was stuck. Okay. So yes, you know what? I was stuck. Now I just remember this. I, cause I tracked every single week, my weight, my calories. I was stuck at 141 pounds for weeks after weeks after week. But the cool part was I was adding calories and I was stuck at 141. Yeah. So that was cool. And so my body was like, okay, all right, you can feed me and I'm not going to gain weight because now my metabolism is picking up. So now, right now, like I'm trying, like right now I'm like, I'm leaning out a little bit, but I'm eating 
1700 calories and that's a lean out for me now. Now mm-hmm. I'm not and I do my cardio, but like I can do 30 minutes a couple times a week and I just get my steps and I can still and I, I just did that getting ready for a photo shoot and I ended up looking phenomenal and I'm like I'm not starving, I'm not hungry, I'm not I'm like I'm I'm doing great. It's about teaching your body to trust you. Yep. Like at one point, 1,700 calories was in a reverse for you. Yeah. So you weren't losing any weight. And then boom, 1,700's a cut. Is now a cut. And that's a yeah. lot of food. I mean, I'm happy with 1,700. Because yeah. also I eat unlimited vegetables. I don't count. I don't really count vegetables at all. Like unless it's like butternut squash like that. Not, you know, those types mm-hmm. of, those aren't really. But like greens, like I load up on my green beans. So like I'm full because that's 1,700 calories plus as many veggies as I need, because, and I'll snack on veggies. So it's like, my, and, and whenever I look at veggies and, and when you eat all that healthy extra food, it's like you're fueling the fire. You're just burning and you're feeding your body and you're letting your body know, like, hey, we're not starving. We're, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. There's something which, yeah, I mean, which is great because now once you trust the process and you go through the process, you realize, like, you know, I know the, I know the first time anybody, anybody does it, it's, it's a little unnerving, but, but, and I get it, which is why you hire, this is why people hire you as a coach, because you're like, look, I will guide you through this. Just trust me, trust the process. And then you will see the light at the other side. But the people who are, if you're too scared, you're never going to get there and you're just always going to struggle. Absolutely. And one of the reasons I called my company eat, which stands for educate and train is to make sure my clients are educated in the process. Yeah. This is why I'm doing this. This is why we're going to add food. This is why we're not going to add food. You know, like, you know what to do yourself that you're like, okay, this is what I'm staying at. I can add more food this week. Sometimes with the clients, if they're not hitting their macros, I don't add more food because if you're not consistent, you right. have to be consistent. You have to, and macros. I was consistent. Like I oh, was taking yeah. it real serious. And, and in my life, whenever, if I'm going to do something, I'm like, okay, if we're doing this, like, let's take it serious and really, cause I wanted, I was like, Dana, I, I'm not spinning my wheels anymore. I can't do any, I can't add any more cardio. I can't go lower in calories. I'm not going to live that way. So I was like, okay, let's trust the process. It's not working. And I I said, it's not working. The way I'm doing it now, it's not working. So I now have to do what I keep hearing everybody does with these reverse (laughs) diets. And I'm going to have to trust the process. And the thing is, it's like, it's kind of like, like who you say with, with educating yourself, as long as you know what the process is, as long as you're educated you can stay like calm inside, but it's like, it's like walking through a dark tunnel and you're like, where are we going? What are we doing? I'm scared. I'm scared. But like, then again, if you know, like I'm in a tunnel and right in front of you is a waterfall. Okay. We're going to go to the, like, if you know where you're going and then you know that at the end, there's going to be a beautiful light at the end, but you're guided by a guide that's telling you what you're doing while you're walking through this dark tunnel. If you're just in this dark tunnel and you don't understand, Mm -hmm. that's really scary. You're like, where where am I going? Is there a bear in this tunnel? Like, what's going to happen? I'm eating all this food. Like, am I going to wake up and I'm heavier? Like, don't keep putting food on my plan. That is a lot of food. But like, if you understand the process that you're going to have to take some steps in this direction to be able to pull back and get the best results, right? Is this making sense? I think the biggest thing for, for someone like you, the reason you were successful is not only did you trust the process, but you stuck with your macros Yeah. and some of the, the excuses literally that I hear in this lifetime from people who are, they don't hit their macros. They're like, well, my hormones are really messed up and it, Hey, yours oh, were, my hormones were screwed up right. and I got the low. I, whenever I hear that, remember I had estrogen through the roof. Mm-hmm. My estrogen was like 400 and something. I had no progesterone and no testosterone and I got to 125. So now whenever I hear people are like, I just, I hit menopause or oh. my, head, my hormones are a mess. I'm like, really? My hormones were jacked and I still got to 125 pounds. So don't tell me I don't know. I mean, I mean, I know there's going to be a million people coming at me like, no, that's not true. Your hormones. I'm like, okay, I'm just telling you what it was. I'll show you my blood work. And I still accomplish my goals with jacked up hormones. And the thing, the thing that probably drives me the craziest is the people that use menopause as an excuse. It's like, well, maybe 
It is a reason, maybe, but what have you been doing? Oh, you've been sitting on your rear end for 10 years? Exactly. It ain't your hormones. They'll say once menopause hit, and I'm like, yes. no, that's because you got older, you got more sedentary, you're not training how you should, you're not moving how you should, you're not really as active. Like, no, because I look at my own mother. I was just thinking look that. Look at my mother. And my mother's like, no, menopause didn't bother me. I'm like, mom, because you never stopped what you were doing. Like, yeah. yes, and my mom is the first to admit where her weight came on. She's like, yeah. Cause I got a divorce from your father. I started dating. I started drinking wine. I started eating <laughs> chips and crackers. I started going out. She would eat burgers and fries. She's like, I never did that when I was married. Yeah. Because, you know, even for me after my divorce, uh, you know, I was married to a guy who is a really picky eater. So I was like, it's not fun to go out to eat with you. He didn't eat sushi. He didn't eat. So I was like, okay, well, cool. Then we're like, why go out to eat? So I could stick to all my stuff. You know, he wasn't a drinker, so we never drank. I, I didn't have all of these, like my mom and I were both in the same situation where we, we were married to men that like we didn't feel like we didn't have like social lives being married to them. So we we're like, yeah, it's easy to just always eat clean and work out. Once I started, like, once my mom started dating and once I started dating, it's like, I was, I was drinking champagne. I'm traveling. <laughs> I'm eating in restaurants. We're crushing sushi together. Greg and I, like, I'm like, come on. So it's not like, oh, well, my hormones changed. So I gained weight. No, my lifestyle changed. Yeah. No, my, like, you know, you have to check yourself. It's like, oh, I gained a lot of weight because, because yeah. I'm like, no, I'm not getting steps or I'm not, you know, working out like I used to. And I am eating crap. I used to never eat, you know, I mean, it, you know, my, my ex-husband didn't eat. I eat Thai food now. I love mm. pad Thai. I do stuff and I, you know, so. Yeah, you eat, like I've seen your weight go up and down when you travel and whatever else. Oh my God, I'm a fluctuating mess. Eat like 10% <laughs> yes. of your body weight. Yes. But you come back and you're like, okay, I was on this trip. I enjoyed some ice cream with my friend. I had this, you yep. didn't restrict yourself. And that's what I love when my clients go on a vacation and they come back and say, you know, for the first time in my life, I didn't have anxiety about what I was eating. I'm like, yes, because yeah. they have a game it's, plan. Yes, and it's all it's all fixable. Like, no, you don't want to set yourself back. Like if I've done that, I've set myself back where I'm like, Dana, and I made a mess. <laughs> One time we went to Tennessee. Oh my God, in Tennessee. Like, I'm sorry if you're from Tennessee and you're listening, but there wasn't one goddamn healthy thing to eat. <laughs> And it was so gross. And we went out to one bad fried thing after another yeah. one. That, it was like, oh my God. And we drove. I mean, I ate pizza hut on the, cause it was a road trip from Florida to Tennessee. Cracker barrel. Like, you did? I, oh, pizza hut. Pizza hut, cracker barrel. <laughs> it was with the kids. And I was like, I can't even find anything. Like we would go out to barbecue. I'm eating this. Holy crap. My, some of my friends, I got back and I would just, I'd send them pictures of my body and they were <laughs> yeah. like, what in tarnation? Like, I were like, Dana. I was like, yo, I can blow up 20 pounds of just bleh. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's gnarly what my body does. But, um, you know, but I'm like, okay, we're getting back on track. Now I didn't say the bounce back is fast. No, it took me a few weeks now to recover yeah. from that. Because I did eat a shitload of calories. I mean, it was really. Mm -hmm. And that happens, like you said, when you travel to Seattle. You know, I was just in Austin, Texas for mm -hmm. five days. Just the act. So the travel, and I went out for like a team dinner on Thursday night. It was kind of family style, but it wasn't anything bad. It was all incredible food. But when you're not used to eating like that. Oh my gosh. No, and like and you're eating at a restaurant, they're using oil and you're having fun and you're not really, you can like mind your portions, but it's not like when you're home and you're like meal prepping and weighing stuff and you're not yep. like preparing the stuff yourself or going heavy with like the vegetables. Like everything I do, like I make a big ass salad and then I add my like four ounces to five ounces of protein. Like everything's very like calculated. When you're eating and you're on the go and you're traveling, it's- very hard. Well, this should be a good example of how important it is to eat well. Yeah. I eat six meals a day. Each of my meals, I have to hit specific macros, 25 grams of protein, yes. whatever it happens to be. When I was in Austin, I didn't eat as much and I didn't track my food. Friday morning after that meal, I was six pounds heavier than I was the Friday before. Oh, Stay, I like, mean, I, I get it. But you get I, it, I, I get right? It. And now oh it's going God. back down. It's That just shows you how much sodium... Uh, cortisol, all everything like that yeah. weighs in on that because I didn't eat anything bad. And it's probably not even the court. You probably were you drinking much water? 
Not enough. See? Yep. So like the thing is, mm -hmm. I don't want people to be scared of sodium. Sodium is okay, but you've got to be flushing it out with yep. water. I mean, and because electrolytes are great. In fact, you know, I, I, I'm big with that. I'm adding more electrolytes to my, to my diet now. And I actually feel much better. My muscles hold more water. I'm fuller. It's, it's nice, but it's because like when I travel, I'm not, dr I'm not drinking the type of mm -hmm. water that I usually drink. I mean, Greg's really good at that. So he buys me water, but it's like at home, I'm filling up my half gallon a couple times a day. And I'm like, really like I'm, I'm flushing. I'm feeling good. I just last week, Right after, I mean, I had my period and then I had a few days of just eating whatever. And I was 142 last Sunday. And today is, it's one week later and I'm 134 today. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's why whenever, how much do you weigh? I'm like, what day yeah. is it? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, it's like, well, this week I'm this. Like, I don't know what I'll be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'll be on Sunday. I don't know what's going to happen. But like, I'm certain, but that's the thing. Like my body can fluctuate like crazy. And it's yeah. really, you know, it's a very, it's it's something that mentally, yeah, it, it can really get, I mean, I, I can one week look lean and tight and photo shoot ready. And the next week, look like a totally different person. And I, it's, it's what, because there's so many variables mm -hmm. and then also it's so easy when you're really not tracking, I'm a volume eater. So I will always go over how much I'm supposed to eat. Always. Right. I don't want a little bit. If I'm eating family style, <laughs> if I'm eating family style, like out, like what you said, like with your, like, like that's my meal. Like that's a meal right there I, on yeah. the counter. It's a big, like I do tons of like lettuce and big things of like green beans and all this, stuff, but I want to eat a lot. Now that's, I prepared it. So it's okay. But if you go to a restaurant mm -hmm. and you're eating a lot, I mean, do you see the calories on menus these days? It's unbelievable. And my husband just said to me the other day, he's like, I thought they had to put Ca like the calorie count on menus, I'm I, like only for corporations. Corporations oh, are okay. required I was to do say, that. Yeah, I, yeah, I see it every now and then. But you ever go to a cheesecake factory? They have a separate menu. I've walked out of cheesecake factory yeah, when I was trying, and I'm like, okay, look, I'm trying to keep it, you know, whatever. I could not find anything, mm -hmm. and I was like, you know what, you know what, and like I was like, kids, get up. I like, I'm sorry, like this isn't like. I'm not trying to be weird, but like, I can't even find anything on here. Like, like one of these dishes is what I should be eating in an entire day. It's like unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And so that's why people don't realize. So when you travel or when you're just going out to dinner with your family or you're whatever you're doing, you don't even realize you're like, wow, like, oh, I, I ate well all day. And then we went out for dinner and it's like, oh my God, great. Like you just totally like you, you crush now like 3,500 calories today. Also too, what a lot of people don't realize is you need to space it out. Your body can only use so many calories at one time. So even if you saved all of your 2000 calories for one meal, it's not doing you any favors. You're not going to lose weight. Well, the thing is I, for me, like if I, if I'm not eating, like I end up getting too hungry and then it's not even going to be too that. Like I'm going to, I'm going to binge because right. if I let myself <laughs> yeah. get too hungry, forget it. Like, so I actually realized. And the other thing is, is a lot of people will ask me about fasting the intermittent fasting and, or fasting altogether. So I tried fasting last year. Um, and it completely crashed my hormones. Um, I ended up with thyroid problems. I, with no thyroid, like I was like freezing cold, my hair falling out. I was like, I've always liked to try all the different things. I did keto. I've done like, just because I'm like, okay, like I like to be able to talk the talk, walk the walk. Mm -hmm. And like, I like to be able to say, to speak about something through experience, like what it did for me. It, it could be the best thing on the planet for some people. It was not for me. I tried the fasting thing. I think I told you when I was going through it. Oh my God, it ruined, I I had high estrogen. It crashed my estrogen. I had I ended up with no thyroid. It was a mess. Um, it was a very bad thing for me. So I do not intermittent fast. I do not do fasting anymore. And I my, my thyroid was always great. And now I have to take thyroid meds right now because I- had no thyroid, mm -hmm. T3 or T4. It happens. Yeah. But, you're, like, but wow. you're aware. Look how many people go through this life 
and they don't and get they're their doing blood work stuff done. because it's the next hot t- yes. t- topic. Now, oh, do you intermittent fast? Oh, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Meanwhile, they're doing so much damage to themselves. Rather than just eat a well balanced, healthy diet, keep your calories in check, keep your protein high. Stop cutting out car- carbs. Stop cutting out healthy fats, and like get your movement. Do some cardio and freaking weight train. Like why? Why with all the hokey <laughs> bullshit? Like, I'm sorry. It's just like every time. And I see these people on Instagram. I've been on social media now for what? Like over 15 years. Like, and the same, so many of the same people are still struggling to lose weight that I've been following forever. And they're on the next thing. Oh, I'm doing whole 30. Oh, this month I'm doing keto. This month I'm doing whatever. And I'm like, none of it's worked for you. Yeah. It's like, I always tell them people that talk to me about intermittent fasting, I'm like, please don't like, that's not, but if you look at a bodybuilder or a female competitor, they don't intermittent fast. No. So, and they lose weight under a structured program working with a coach. Yeah. Period. Well, first of all, people, it's like they always, you know, with, with bodybuilders or anybody who stays lean or fitness competitors or whatever, it's like, they're also not cutting out carbs. They're not cutting out fats. They're keeping their protein high. They're, they're getting in physical activity, cardio, a lot of bodybuilders, all they ever did was walk. When have you ever seen a big bodybuilder (laughs) running on a treadmill or running outside? Very rarely. I mean, or if you do, I mean, they're, they're already athletes (laughs) or yeah, are being chased by a bear, but like, it's usually they're just like getting a lot of activity and it's always comes down to their nutrition. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, with, but, but with body, I've always had to have like healthy fat. Like it's always been balanced. It's never been like, Oh, I'm training for a show and I'm doing keto. Like, no, how how would that even work? I don't get it. And like, if you want a lean athletic look and not like the skinny fat look, you're going to need muscle and you're going to need carbs for that. Mm -hmm. And if you want your hormones in check, you're going to need healthy fats and your digestion in track in check. My digestion has never been better ever since like really coming back to like a really nice balanced diet. You know, I put fats at every meal. Now I have carbs at every meal. Um, lots of vegetables and my protein and wow. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, I don't, I don't even like, I added more fats lately ever since like with my hormones. And like, I used to be like, oh, I, I suffer with, uh, constipation and all this. I don't ever, I've got like my, like, wow. I'm like, holy crap. It's like, no, less is not more like you, like eat, eat the macros, like stop avoiding them. Yeah, I agree. (sighs) So frustrating. You just, you just, it's just, it's just, I see social media and I'm just like, oh God, but you I know, know. Well, here's what I don't understand. Yes. Listen to the other people that are commenting in said Facebook group, but don't listen to actual fitness professionals. Yeah. Listen to the, all the people that are yapping on there that really have, why would you ask somebody on Facebook for advice about your nutrition? Right. But I see it all the well, time. And also ask people and, and look to people who have street cred. Like, that's what I always say. Like, not only have they, they done it, but they've lived the lifestyle for a long time. So often like these like influencers or people who know stuff, it's like, they're not walking the walk. They're not, they're, they're talking the talk, Mm -hmm. but then I'm like, okay, are you doing it? And then they're also constantly with the yo-yos or they're changing things up or I don't know. It's just, it's, frustrating. And, but I see the, the, the legitimate ones are also not preaching any, um, hokey style diets. Correct. They're just, they just are teaching lifestyle. And that's what I love because at the end of the day, the lifestyle part is going to win. The lifestyle is what's going to take you to 80, 90 years old. And you're like, Oh, I can still do this at this age. I can still eat like this. I can still move like this. I can still, you know, do the stuff and still feel great and keep my weight at a nice, uh, level. And I should, we should resistance train until we're, we're 110. Yeah. I like that lifestyle will always win. Always, always. There's not nothing. What, what, like what diet is that you can, is realistic to take you to, to, do you want to do keto forever? What's really sad just quickly is the term diet has gotten such a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. Like, I think we talked about this last time. I know when you say that your diet looks like X, Y, and Z, I know what that means. I'm not like, she's dieting. dieting, Always diet. No, it's like, what are you intaking on a daily date? What's your diet? Like, yeah. Like what is your diet consist of? And I get a lot of thrill out of 
as much variety as I can add to my to my diet, my daily diet. So it's like I get creative with, I'm constantly rotating in different fruits and different vegetables and like I'll change it up. And sometimes I'm into eggplant, sometimes I'm into green beans and sometimes I'm into, you know, and like different berries. And like last week I was into, I was like on a blueberry kick and I'm do, adding blackberries and raspberries. And like, I'm always like variety, 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 keeping my body like always flooded with all different, you know, uh, butternut squash and and sweet potatoes and regular potatoes and just everything. That's like yeah. keep. That's why it's like they always say like eat the color of the rainbow. And I know it sounds hokey, but it's not. It's true. There's a reason. And that's why even with like devotion, I'm always coming up with ways to eat devotion in different ways because yeah, it is hard to. Yesterday I came up really short on protein by the end of the day, and I was like, what the heck happened? And I realized I'm like, wow, I now see why people do struggle with getting in your protein because I didn't, I was so busy and I didn't like make my profit and I didn't have like a fluff or I'm putting or what, and I'm like, oh my God. So just with the couple meals that mm-hmm. I ate, I, you know, yes, I had three eggs for breakfast. I still like did, but then I like, I had turkey for lunch. I went to the deli with my kids for, and we had like a fun little, and I had made, I had like a, a deli salad and I added turkey to it. But then I was like, oh my God, I'm so, sh- I'm just like, I'm so, down on protein. And it's because like, I usually use devotion all through the day, but I wasn't home. I didn't do it. Mm-hmm. And I realized by the end of the day, I'm like, wow, now I see why it's so hard for people to get in protein. Yeah. If they're not paying attention or have a structure. Yeah. yeah it's very difficult. It's very difficult. So yeah. then I was like, so I actually had, a, had two and a half scoops of, of devotion before bed <laughs> with some oh. like almonds and blueberries. And I made a whole concoction and it was delicious, but I was like, wow, I really didn't realize like how, and I was still, I still fell short on protein yesterday. Even I was like, how many, how much can I cram in? But yeah, <laughs> yeah. if you don't, if you don't pre-plan mm-hmm. and then I realized like, wow, this is how people are under eating because if you're busy and you're not planning and you're not prepared. Yeah, definitely. It's so easy for people to kind of, like you said, under eat or lose track. Like you and I were talking about it one time. You're like, I used to think people were like crazy for saying that they forgot to eat. Yeah. You're like, dude, I'm busy. I'm like, I understand. Same. Yep. Yep. I used to, oh, and usually for Dana to ever miss food. Yeah. Here. But yeah, if you're busy and I get it, cause now it's like that, my life gets like that. But then again, it's like, I bring my food with me. That's why I make the loaves. That's why I pre-bake my meals. Mm-hmm. I pre, this morning I was up at 5 a.m. I was, I, I made three packages of la- ground turkey. Got that in the refrigerator now. I made a stew for this week. We've got chunks of uh, meat and potatoes and all kinds of stuff for the kids. I, I have to pre-make everything because if you wait and wing it, and then you look at your, 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 tracker at the end of the day, you're like, Oh no. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, Oh no. What are you going to know now? Go eat all that food. No. So now you miss another opportunity to get in quality protein, quality carbs, healthy fats, mm-hmm. and, and nourish your body. That's what it's all about. Right. All right. All right. Well, this was a great episode. Yeah. I feel like I've been yelling at you. To- <laughs> <laughs> Serena. Like, no, but I, I know I really, I get passionate about it because it's like, you know, People, people constantly want to talk about this topic and you want to, it's like, and it, to me, it just seems so simple and I know that it's not. And I'm sure I know your frustration sometimes when you want clients to just get it, like just, mm-hmm. you want it to click because you're like, oh my God, if you just would understand that it's going to take some effort at first, but the more you do it, the more it turns into your lifestyle. If they just apply themselves, they'll get there faster. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, this was an awesome episode. I hope you guys learned a lot from it. We did touch on our on the cardio, the uh, the metabolic adaptation. So if you are struggling with that um, and you want to try a reverse diet, uh, reach out to Serena. She's amazing at, at that concept and um, she can certainly help you or any trusted coach. I mean, guys, it's something that you have to do for yourself. You really don't be under eating and struggling um, alone and trying to figure it out. There are people out there who can help you. So thank you. And and look, reach out to me too. I'm not a coach, but I can be a support and understand that, you know, you have to trust the process. I know it's scary, but it, it has to be done. Um, and it can be done. It's been proven. I'm living proof. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining this episode of until it's done a devoted podcast. And thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thank you.